But we can't. We can see what we can decode. And therefore, we operate within a dimension, we might call it, and it's penetrated by other dimensions, which allows those other dimensions to interact with ours, which I'm going to get to in the second section, because that is fundamental to the control system. What we're doing is we are putting our focus of attention into this reality through the body computer, and therefore this seems to be the only world that exists. But the space we're occupying is teeming, teeming with life of endless varieties. So if we come into this world of mind and we hold a connection to consciousness, we are in this world physically and we can experience this. We're going to go to the pub, yeah, that's our beer with the year. But we're not of this world in terms of the point of observation. We are in this world, but we're observing it from here. We can see things here that this can't see. And that's why the control system has to keep us here. And a structured society to make that happen. To keep us in bewilderment by being only able to decode and experience reality through the five senses. And once you are in the five senses, and you're not getting inspiration, insight, intuitive knowing from higher levels of your consciousness, where do you look to get a fix on who you are, where you are, and the world you're living in? There. And who controls that? The control system that controls the media, politics, education, science. The idea is isolate us in the five senses, isolate us in body-mind, and then program the body-mind to see the world that suits the control system. Time and space are just information within the metaphysical universe fabric, the vibrational fabric, which we then decode into what appears to be time and space. There is no time and space. When you put a disk in a computer, it's got information on it. You put it in the, in, in the computer, the computer reads it. On the screen, you see time and space, or what appears to be time and space. But all it is, is information on the disk being read by the computer and being put on the screen. That's what we, we are doing all the time. Time's an illusion. And my goodness me, if we fall for that, then uh, we totally get encompassed by time. That time exists. You can, you can, you can say it's, it's one o'clock, I've got to meet someone at one o'clock, so you're there at the same time and synchronize that. But all, the, all, all along, you, you know that it's just, it's just a construct. It's not, it's not part of you this time. Because no time is where consciousness operates. And if we operate completely connected to time, then by that very nature we're going to disconnect from consciousness, which is on another level of perception. Our time is just crazy. Uh, you cross a, an invisible line in the ocean, you go into tomorrow, you go the other way, you go into yesterday. There is only the now. That's all there is. People say, no, no, there's the past and there's the future. Well, okay. When you think of the future, where are you? You're in the now. When you think of the past, memories, where are you? You're in the now. These are constructs. These are perceptions. They're not real. Only thing that's real is now. Everything happens in the now. And the only moment we can change anything is in the now. And if we get pulled into the past, all regret, I wish I had, ooh, that woman in 1953, ooh. Or we get pulled into the future, oh my God, what's going to happen? Oh, yeah, outcome, oh, what if, what if, what if? Then we're getting pulled out of the only time that exists, and therefore our power to change things, to impact on now, is diluted. And we are absolutely dominated by time. What's the time? Oh my God, is that the time? Oh my goodness, what's going to happen? Are you going to get time long? I'm late. And yet, the now is the only thing that exists, and time, like space, is a perception, which is part of the construction of reading. You could see time in a way like, uh, like a disc, like a, like a DVD. What you've seen in the film is your past, you, as you perceive the past. What you're looking at in the film at that moment you perceive as the present 
and what you've yet to see in the film, you perceive as the future. Yet all that information exists on that disc at the same time. Whip back a bit, you've gone into the past. Whip forward, you've gone into the future. And I've uh, been talking for years about the time loop, as I call it. Wrote a book with that title. And it's not really a loop, but it does expre can express itself like that in the play-out world of so-called physical reality. And we go round and round and round, and it comes back to the start. And we think we're going forward, but because we're only in it for a certain section, we think we're going forward. If we stayed with it, it would come basically back to the start. It's like a, a place of experience, and depending on what we wish to experience depends on what part of the, of the loop that we decide to experience. Because, as I said earlier, this vibration... And by the way, this vibration coming out of the black holes vibrates in the now. It doesn't move through time. It, it carries the encoded information that we decode as time, but it vibrates in the now. But it doesn't vibrate just the same forever. It goes through a cycle, a vibrational cycle. It changes. And as it changes, it elicits different information from the suns, which we then decode and as we do so, the world moves on, experience moves on through different epochs. You look at the ancients around the world, and they invariably see time as secular. Uh, you have, of course, the famous yugas in Indian belief, Hindu belief, where the world goes through different cycles. You have a golden age when everything is expansive and everything's fully integrated and connected. And then you have other yugas which are suppressed and you have control and you do not have the expansive awareness that you had before. It's a different kind of experience. And so as this vibration changes, it takes this reality through a cycle and then comes back again. This is where all these yugas come in. And what happens is the left part half of the brain particularly decodes these, this information which is vibrating in the now, it decodes it into a sequence. It's what some brain scientists call the left brain a serial processor. And it's this sequence that it puts the information in that appears to be the passage of time from past to future. The quicker it decodes it, the quicker time seems to move, the slower it decodes it, the reverse. This is why, as Einstein said, if you're in the company of a beautiful woman, time can uh, pass very quickly, but if you're in a dentist chair, it can pass very slowly because your brain is decoding reality in a different way, putting it into a sequence in a different way. And so the time loop is actually just the decoding of this changing vibration, changing information. And again, if you can hold connection to out there, you can be in the world and not of it. If you're not, you're literally caught in the loop, and that's where most people have been for a very long time. Now, as I say, the, the, the body is a biological computer, and I, I'll get through this per, part pretty quickly because I've been through this uh, before in the talks and stuff, but it's very important to keep connecting the dots. So, the body computer is our vehicle to experience this virtual reality, consciousness to experience it. Um, it's like, you know, you, you want to go to um, experience another planet, you need an outer shell. As I said earlier, we need an outer shell vibrating within the frequency of this reality. And this is what makes racism so ludicrous, so insane, such a confirmation of ignorance. Because it's just a vehicle to experience this reality. And racism is the final confirmation that you are caught in five sense reality and have not a clue of the nature of what we all are, racist and non-racist, and that is consciousness. Humans, we think we're humans, we're, we're human. Humans are like a software program. We're not human. We're experiencing being a human. We are consciousness having that experience. As this uh, article in uh, the San Francisco Chronicle said, DNA is a universal software code. From bacteria to humans, the basic instructions for life are written with the same language. And there are four codes, A, C, G, and T, or in my case, G and T, G and T, G and T. I like that one. It's in my DNA. And how these codes are in relation to each other decides if the outer shell is a human, a mouse, a virus, anything. And it very much connects into those uh, green codes on the computer screens in the Matrix movies. And the body computer, biological computer, has the ability to think and assess for itself, um, ticks every box when you go through it. The reason they're now talking about connecting the brain to desktop computers is because they are 
connecting two computers. One far more infinitely more advanced, yes, but two computers. That's how it's possible. Um, when uh, the computer won't work, won't turn on, won't process, we say the computer's dead. You drop a computer from a top floor, it will smash and it will be dead. You drop a human computer, it will smash and be dead. Because that's all that happens at death, the computer dies. We don't bloody die. There is no death. We're consciousness, infinite consciousness. The, the computer goes into sleep mode just to tick over. We go into sleep mode just to tick over. We have antivirus technology in computers to seek out the viruses that are a danger to the computer's systems and what you might call health. We have a phenomenal antivirus system. We call the human immune system, which does exactly the same. And when you have a, a, a virus system and a new virus comes up, they have to update it because it can't work out how to stop it, because it's not been programmed to. This is updated by reacting and then uh, integrating that so that the next time that comes, it can deal with it. This is a, an enhanced uh, photograph taken at the Necker Hospital in Paris when they put tracer dye into the acupuncture points and then photographed it. And the tracer dye went through these lines of energy in the body, the chi, the, 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 the photons. And when you look at it, it's just like a motherboard. And interestingly, when this chi is passing around too slowly or too quickly, the body is ill in some way. And what acupuncture is about is using the uh, needles and other techniques to balance out that flow of energy. And what happens when the information is passing around a desktop computer in less than optimal speed? You say, my bloody computer's slow today, and often it's slow because it has a virus. The brain is the central processing unit of the computer, which in a, in a desktop is a, is a microchip. It's the main processor of information. The DNA is the hard drive, and it's not just the DNA we see physically, because even DNA is just the decoded version of an energy field. Um, we have a, an energy counterpart, which we call the human aura. What we call cultures, I'm this culture, I, I'm, I'm a black South African, I'm a, a Hindu or whatever. These are different sub-softwares of the human software. This guy, William Sheridan, um, was in a New York hospital waiting for a heart transplant and he joined an art therapy course. He was about as good as I am and I'm, I'm a terrible, terrible artist. And this is what he was drawing. After his heart transplant, suddenly he went back on the th art therapy course and started drawing much more sophisticated pictures. As a result of agreeing to promote organ donation, he managed to meet the donor's mother. He asked her the obvious question, did your son have an interest in art? And she said he wanted art materials rather than toys from the age of 18 months. He was crazy about art. And there have been many studies, some of them very extensive over the years, that have shown the incredible uh, connection between people who've received hearts, lungs, and other organs from people and then taken on either and or their character traits or their abilities. Because what are they doing? They're downloading information from one computer to another. That's how it gets passed across. Credo Mutwa, the great Zulu shaman in South Africa, told me that in the days when they used to eat people in Africa, one of the golden rules was that you must heat the person to a certain temperature, otherwise if you eat them, you become them. Same principle. We are led to believe that what identifies us with the body and what identifies us with the body being us is whether we're a man or a woman. Again, being a man or a woman is not what we are, it's the experience that we're having. How can it, we be a man and a woman, or how can that be what we are, when you can change from a man to a woman through chemical intervention. It's changing the nature of the computer through chemical intervention. Freaky the chicken, who was uh, in the papers a few years ago, started out life as a hen, laying eggs, then had a massive, for some reason, uh, explosion of testosterone, and became a cockerel. Started chasing the chickens, uh, the hens, and crowing at dawn. Grew a comb. How can male or female be what we are 